Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, I will be discussing local adjustment masking and luminosity masks. In On One Photo Raw 2018, there are a number of different types of masks. In the effects module, you have filter masks, and in the layers module, you have layers masks, and in the develop module, we have these local adjustment masks. Masks throughout On One Photo Raw 2018 all accomplish the same thing but the functionality between the different masks are slightly different. So I will be covering the filter masking when I get to the videos on the effects module and the layers masking when I get to the videos concerning the layers module. But since we're still learning about the develop module and we just went over the local adjustment tools and I touched on masking with those tools, I wanted to get more in depth on that subject. Now, as far as masking is concerned, it's been my experience that people either just get it or they don't. So I've try, I'm trying something different here, a, maybe a novel approach. So hopefully I don't really confuse the subject and this helps make masking a little clearer. Now, as you can see, I have this silly little diagram here of the stick family. And with it, I have a lighter gray rectangle and a darker gray rectangle and a lighter blue circle and a darker blue circle. And I'm just doing this to help illustrate masking and luminosity masks when we get to that part of this video. Now, first of all, just about masking in general. I talked in the previous two videos, I believe that was episode 19 and 20, and we talked about the adjustment brush and the gradient tool. And in those tools, there is the ability to mask out part of your image so that the tool will only affect a specific part of the image. But there's a lot of things you could do with the masks. And that's what we're going to be talking about here. So for this image to begin with, let's just go to local adjustments over here in the right hand panel. And by default, it turns on the adjustment brush. And it doesn't matter for this demonstration what I have the slider set at. It it's, makes no difference as far as the mask is concerned. So to better illustrate what I'm doing, I'm going to paint with color. This just helps you better see what's going on. So I'm going to click here, paint with color. I'm going to get a nice bright yellow. So we'll get yellow. So I'm going to paint with color on here with yellow. And again, it doesn't matter. I could be just doing normal exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, color temp adjustments. It doesn't matter. I'm just painting with color. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to paint a blob over Junior's face. So you got this big yellow blob over Junior's face. And on the surface, it looks like I just painted a big yellow circle on this image. There's a little bit more to it than that. There's a, actually, when you do this with local adjustments, on one automatically adds a mask, a mask. And if you look over at the adjustment panel, you could see there's a little postage stamp view of that mask. And if I click on it, it will open up the mask properties. Now, as we look at this mask, you get a larger postage stamp view of the mask. But if you really want to just view the mask, click right here where it says view. You also could go down here at the bottom of the image and click this little rectangle with a circle in the middle to get a view of the mask. Either way, it does the same thing. So we'll click here and we're getting a view of the mask. And when you look at the mask, it's really all black with a white circle. What that is implying is that wherever white is, is going to allow whatever adjustments you are doing to come through. In this case, I'm painting with yellow. So the mask, where it's black, is blocking out the yellow. So theoretically, on this image, there is yellow everywhere, but the mask is blocking it everywhere but right over Junior's face. And to demonstrate that, 
Let me go back to the mask again, and I'm going to invert the mask. So now we have a black mask, or the where the mask is over Junior's face is a black circle, and the rest rest of the mask is white. Now I'll turn the mask view off, and now we could see that the entire image is yellow, but we could see Junior's face. So that kind of proves that the mask is allowing the adjustment to come through. So the adjustment is actually everywhere. The mask is either hiding it from parts of the image or allowing it to come through in other parts of the image. So the mask is very important. Now just to uh, maybe illustrate this a little further and to show you that the gradient, the adjustable gradient tool is no different. Let's grab an adjustable gradient tool and I'm going to put it right there. Now again it doesn't matter what your settings are. I could turn exposure up, down, whatever. But again for the probably the sake of this video and demonstration, why don't we paint with color again and why don't I get yellow again? Just so you could see it. So we have this gradient now and it's going from solid yellow at the very top and it goes and fades out towards the middle. But if we look at the mask by clicking here and then click on view, you could see that the mask is white and then it gets gray and darker gray and darker gray until it's black. So that's a little more information about the mask. White will let 100% of whatever you're doing, be it the gradient, or the adjustment brush, white will let 100% of whatever is those settings are for that tool come through. Gray will let some of the settings come through, and the darker the gray is, the less amount of those settings will be allowed through until it's black, and then no settings will come through. So the mask then isn't just black and white. Gray is involved too, so gray, the darker it gets, the less amount of the settings will come through. So we're going to get rid of that again and I think we'll just go back to our adjustment brush and I want to show you some different types of mask properties. So again I'm going to paint with yellow and um, I think we'll just again take out Junior's face with that and then we'll open up the mask properties by clicking on that little postage stamp and you could see that there are some settings, and this one here is density. And as I pull density down, you'll see that the yellow comes through on everything. Now, with density at zero, the mask is totally white. I'll click on view. There's our mask. The mask is totally white. As I turn push density towards the right, you'll see that the... Um, wherever I didn't paint is getting darker and darker gray until it's totally black. And then I'll turn the mask off and that's our yellow circle over Junior's face. Now feathering, let me go back to the mask view, we'll just feather the mask and you can see how it kind of blurs out the edges. And if you go to the extreme right, it really just kind of blurs out the entire circle. And we'll turn that mask off and then you could see the effect. Now levels won't do anything because I painted in yellow and it's really not going to do anything. But where that will come in uh, into control is when we do an illuminosity mask. And the same thing for window. You can see that's even grayed out. So there's nothing to see there. So that's the basics of masks. So when you use masking with local adjustments, even one mouse click of a brush really puts that adjustment, whatever that adjustment is, in this case I painted with color, it puts it everywhere. And the mask will mask it out where you don't want it and mask it in wherever you paint it in. Similarly for the graduated uh, grad or the gradient tool, when you add a mask with that or add that to your image, you're putting a gradient mask on your image. Now, let's get rid of this and let's talk about luminosity masks. Luminosity mask is kind of hidden in the masking tool or in the local adjustment tools. You could access it with either tool. Just click add layers the easiest way. Then 
click on the little mask attributes um, thumbnail right here to open up the mask attributes. And you'll see right here is Lumen. Now before I click that though, let's just put some settings to our brush. Uh, we have exposure down by default, but again, I think so you could better see this, I'm gonna paint with color, I'm gonna paint with yellow. And again, it doesn't matter. You don't have to paint with yellow to see this effect or to use a luminosity mask. This just helps better illustrate what's going on. So I'm gonna be painting with yellow. Now all I'm gonna do is click Lumen right here. And what you'll see is that yellow will appear wherever white was. Now you could see our stick figure family was like white chalk outline. And that is where yellow is coming through at 100% yellow. On the other hand, we had these two gray rectangles. This left-hand gray rectangle was lighter gray than the right-hand gray rectangle. So it is a little brighter yellow than what the far right one is. Similarly, for our blue circles, the left one was a really light blue circle, and you could see that let most of the yellow come through. And the right one was a real dark blue circle, so that let barely any of the yellow come through. And it doesn't even look yellow anymore. But the idea here, it's the luminosity values of the image is what the mask is reading, and the mask is getting put over those values um, shades of gray, depending on how bright that color may be, no matter what the color is. So if it's a very light blue, it'll put a lighter gray. Let's view the luminosity mask. Now this is the luminosity mask, and you can see that it's black wherever nothing was painted on. It's perfectly white wherever white was painted on. Where the lighter gray was, it became lighter gray. Where the darker gray was, it became the darker gray. And as far as the color is concerned, it didn't care that it was blue. It's just that relatively, relative to each other, the lighter blue is a lighter gray than the darker blue. And then when you, you know, put that over the actual colors in the image, this is what you're going to see. So that's all fine and good. But where does that take us? Well, we'll take a look at another image, but I wanted to show you just real quick levels. Now, because if I move it to the right or left, you'll see how that affects the midtones a little more. And the midtones are anything that's not absolute white or absolute black. And you can see how it's affecting the mask. Let's go to the view of the mask and move that. And you can see it's making the mask either darker when I move the midtone slider to the right or lighter if I move the midtone slider to the left. I'm not sure the other two will do much with this image. Yeah, now the, the black one, the far left slider, will make those darker gray parts of the mask darker. And this will make those darker as well. Now the window, if I move it, you can see how it just kind of uh, restricts it. So it's making the gray as I move this left-hand part of the slider to the right, it's taking out the gray, making it black. And if I move this one, it's taking out the white. You can see that? So this one's taking out the darker grays. And this one's taking out the lighter grays, including the white. So that gives you an idea. Now, okay, that's all fine and good about luminosity mask. How could we actually use it? So let's go to an image. A real image. So I'm going to go back to the browse module, go to the grid view, and then I'm going to pick this image right here, and we'll go to the develop module. Now you can see that there is a lot of bright areas of this image and a lot of dark areas of this image. So it's already been processed. I did some tone and color adjustments, I did some detail and luminance noise reduction, and lens corrections. Now I want to add a luminosity mask. So I'm going to click on local adjustments. It automatically will open a layer for me. I'm going to click on this little postage stamp next to adjustment. and That opens up the mask attributes. And I'm just going to click lumen. 
Now, right away, it made the sky a little darker because by default, when you open up any new layer in the local adjustments panel, it will have exposure at minus one. So as I move that, you can see it's really affecting the sky. Why? Well, that's because a luminosity mask will allow your adjustments to come through to the highlights at, if it's white, at 100%. So we'll look at the view of the mask, and you can see it looks just like a black and white image. It's really the mask, though. This is the mask we're viewing. So that brighter part, it's letting 100% of the adjustment, whatever I move these sliders to, is going to affect the brightest parts of the image but it will not affect the darker parts as much to if it's black not at all so this is where luminosity mask come in handy especially when you have a high contrast scene and you want to do adjustments just to the highlights or as you'll see in a minute adjustments just to the shadows so i'm going to turn off the mask and go back to our real image and i'm going to make that sky a little darker. I'm going to add a bit of contrast to the sky. Um, I think I'll add some vibrance to the sky as well, maybe even some saturation. So there is before and there's after. So we added some drama to the sky. Now I want to add another luminosity mask. So I'm going to click Add Layer. So we have a second mask now. I'm going to click on the mask itself and I'm going to click Lumen. Now it's going to darken the sky a little more because by default exposure is at minus one when you first open up these adjustment layers. I'm going to invert the mask though. So that means whatever is white will become black, whatever is black becomes white, whatever is light gray becomes dark gray, and so on. So when I invert by clicking this button right here, now these adjustments really affect the shadows. And you can see if I move exposure, it's affecting, you know, anything that is dark, the darkest part of the image get, get affected more than the lighter parts of the image. I think that's a more accurate way to mention it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up those shadows a bit. And I am going to add some vibrance. And I am going to add some structure. A lot of structure. Why don't we do that? So this adjustment layer with its luminosity, inverted luminosity mask is affecting mainly the shadows. And you can see how as I turn it off and on, the darker bottom part of the image is being affected. And the sky, where it's brighter, not quite as much. We go to this one, which is the highlight luminosity mask. As I turn that off and on, you can see that's mainly affecting the sky. So I hope that's clear. I tried a different novel approach to explaining what masking does and how it works, especially how it pertains to the local adjustments in the Develop Module Von 1 Photo Raw 2018. And then I hope this was a good example of luminosity masking. So you get an idea how you could use luminosity masking to adjust very specific tonal ranges of your image. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.